I heard this years ago that one word from God can change your life. Yes. Got it? I want you to do something. I want you to believe God for three words, three things that either you didn't see, didn't understand, didn't know, or it confirmed what you already knew. I want you to look for three revelations out of this lesson. Got it? Because there's going to be three parts to it. I want you to get at least one thing out of each part. You ready? Okay, you may be seated. I've already prayed, but for people who feel like the pastor needs to pray, I want to pray and thank God for not only you that are in person here today, for all of you that are watching online, we thank you for your online presence. Father, we thank you for your work today. We thank you for the stewardship of the hearts and the minds of the people, and we believe that they are good ground. And I believe that I'm anointed, and I thank you for confirming the word with signs following in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our pastor introduced a series, and, and see, I'm, I'm, on the, I'm still on the teaching team, but he introduced a series entitled Open Handed. The theme of this series is living with a generosity mindset. Now, this is a four-lesson series. In lesson one, Pastor uh, MK talked about a generous life, a generous life. Lesson two, Minister Karen did an amazing job last week, and she talked about safeguards in your giving, that, that the Bible uh, gives us safeguards. Those two lessons, and this is a four-lesson series, your pastor will be back next week, <laughs> and he will close out the four-lesson series, but this lesson today, those four, first two lessons were about giving. All right. Giving. The theme was giving. The lesson today is entitled, Being a Good Receiver. Being a what? Good Being a what? Good so the theme of this lesson is not your giving. That's not, we've talked about that. The theme, the theme of this lesson is receiving. Being a good what? Receiver. Now, I'm going to give you a test. I was sent to give you a test. This is test day. Going to be three parts to this test. You will be uh, able to grade yourself. Okay? Now listen, listen carefully. Many Christians in the body of Christ struggle with receiving from God and others. Now, when I say many in the body of Christ, I'm talking about givers. And that's you. Come on, say, that's me. That's me. So many Christians in the body of Christ, even those who have embraced a giving lifestyle, struggle receiving from God and receiving from others. I will remind you that more often than not, God will use people, come on, said people, people, to bless other people, yes. including you. Yes. So I want to ask some rhetorical questions. You don't have to shout out or anything, but I just want you to think about it. <laughs> Number one, do you struggle receiving from others? Think about it. <clears throat> think about it. Do you struggle receiving from others? Second rhetorical question. Are you a good receiver? Are you a good receiver? It is just as wrong to be a poor receiver as it is to be a bad giver 
or a non-giver. But many Christians don't understand that it's just as wrong to not receive from God as it is to give. Okay. I'm going to ask you to grade yourself. Okay. I want you to grade yourself on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 to 10, with 10 being a great receiver. I'm a great receiver. I want you to grade yourself. Now, if, if you're going to put it on your devices, put it on your devices. If, you don't, if you're taking notes, write it down. If you're watching online right now, I want you to grade yourself on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being, I'm an outstanding, I'm a great receiver, okay? One all the way down, you're just a poor receiver. Got it? How many got that? Okay, take a moment right now and grade yourself. At the end of the lesson, we're going to ask you to do it again, and you may have the same grade, or you may need to adjust it, bring it down, or bring it up. How many got it? Okay, now, you got it? You got your score? Come on, nod at me. You got your score? Okay, now, let's talk about receiving, because if you have a receiving problem, then you have a weakness. Got it? You have a weakness. And you've got to rectify it. You've got to rectify that weakness if you're going to live in a no-lack state, you got to rectify. Let me share with you what I'm not talking about when I talk about being a good receiver. I'm not talking about being a good taker. I'm not talking about being a good taker. There are takers, and then there are givers. Takers are self-focused. Takers put their own interests before others. Takers gain as much as they can and give as little as they can. Takers will take all day long, but takers are selfish. Takers operate in a lopsided relationship. Takers and givers are not the same. So let's push that off the table. When I talk about receiving, I'm not talking about being a taker. I'm not also talking about a transaction. A transaction. A, a, a transaction has to do with buying and selling. Okay, that's not what we're talking We're not talking about that. You said, well, give me an illustration of that. How many single ladies here? Let me see the single ladies. Come on, wave at me, single ladies. Okay, single ladies. Ooh, okay. <laughs> If you're dating a guy, okay, and he's doing all these wonderful things for you, he's buying you things, he's being real nice, I mean, he, he, he really, he's blessing you, but he expects a return. So if he's, if he's pushing you for sexual favors and he gets upset if you don't reciprocate, that's not what we're teaching. That's a transaction. In other words, he's the buyer, and he wants you to be the seller. So if you walk away from that, don't feel bad about that. You just said no to a transaction. Okay, okay. So there are times when you don't say, you say yes to get the, the receiving, but not yes to transactions. Okay, we got that off the way. We got that off the way. Okay, okay, okay. Stay with me, guys. Stay with me. Stay with me. <laughs> Stay with me. I'm on your team. Now I'm on your team. Okay, now listen at this. The first part of the test is self evaluation questions. And we're going to be asking questions all through the lesson. I'm going to ask three introductory questions. You ready? Yes, sir. Now listen at this. When someone tries to give you something, do you deflect or minimize their gift in any way? Do you deflect or minimize, and I'm talking about a genuine gift. Do you deflect or minimize? In other words, do you say, oh no, I can't accept that. That's deflecting. 
do you say, you didn't have to do all this. That's deflecting. Oh, this is too much. I've had, I've had uh, uh, waiters and waitresses, I give a tip because I, I, I'm a giver, and I look for opportunities to give everywhere, everywhere. See, giving is a lifestyle, so I'm looking everywhere. Doesn't make to, any difference to me whether you serve me well or not, because I'm a giver. All right. yeah, that's good. See, I'm not measuring it by how you do me, because I want to bless you, because when I bless you, I'm looking to God to bless me. I'm not looking for you to bless me. I'm looking for God to bless me, okay? But I've given a big tip, and the waiter or waitress said, oh, just so much. I said, well, you want me to take back something? I'll take back by, I, I said, well, I'll take back by 50% back then. They said, oh, no, no, no. Okay. If someone tells you that they're paying for your meal, do you default and begin to look for the cheapest item on the list? Second question, when someone tries to be nice or generous, is your default response one of gratitude or suspicion? They must have some kind of motive. Are you, are you initially suspicious? Question number three, when someone gives you something, do you feel self-imposed pressure to reciprocate? Do you feel a sense of indebtedness to return the favor? How you doing? How you doing? Okay. Let's go to the second part of the test. It's just three parts of the test. Let's go to the second part of the test. Are you like Jesus? Do you pattern yourself after Jesus? Because Jesus was an amazing giver. I mean, he gave so much that he had a treasurer. And a part of that, the role of that, uh, the, the, the whole responsibility of the treasurer was to minister to the poor. He gave so much that he gave his whole life. So are you like Jesus? Because Jesus wasn't just a good giver. He was a good receiver. So let's look at the times that he gave. In Luke chapter 7, we won't turn, we won't go to the monitor. Luke chapter 7, a woman with an alabaster box or jar of, of precious ointment anointed Jesus with it. And the Bible says she was a sinner and Jesus received it. What if a sinner wanted to give you something? Just test. What if a sinner wanted to give you something? In Luke chapter 8, the Bible says a group of women who had gone through healing and deliverance from Jesus' ministry, and they had decided they were going to partner with Jesus' ministry, and he took it. Are you like Jesus? In Luke chapter 9 and John chapter 6, there was a little boy had a lunch. Five loaves and two little fish. Just five little biscuits. Had little biscuits and, and sardines. Offered it to Jesus, and Jesus took it. What if a child offer you something? I, you know, over the years, I will have children come up to me, and they offer me a dollar. I know the parents have, have encouraged them to do that. They're training them to give. And guess what I did? I took it. I took it. In Luke chapter 10, Jesus received a meal from friends. He ate over their house, Martha, Mary, Lazarus. He took the invitation. Amen. In Luke chapter 19, he needed a donkey to ride into Jerusalem. And guess what? Somebody provided him a, a donkey, and he received it. 
And Luke chapter 22, Jesus needed a place to have the last, what we call the last supper, and someone offered their room, and Jesus received it. Are you like Jesus? I see you. Are you really like Jesus? Really, I mean just really like Jesus. Because Jesus was a good receiver. There's a, a Luke chapter, I say this for last, Luke chapter 5, Jesus was ministering by the lake and the people was pressing upon him. And he looked over and there were some empty ships and he turned to Peter and said, may I borrow your ship? And, and Peter gave him the ship and he preached to the people from the sh ship. He took the boat, yeah. used it as a platform, a pulpit, and blessed the people. Anybody know what happened after that? Yeah. Then Jesus said, now that you've given, yeah. I want you to launch out into the deep. Yeah. Let down your nets for a draw. And the Bible says caught two boatloads of fish. I wanted to say that for last because I want to give you this point. Please listen to this point. Please listen to the point. When God instructs you to give, he's not just involving you in blessing others. God is trying to get something to you. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Whenever God instructs you, whether it be in church, outside of church, whenever God instructs you to give, he's not just involving you in blessing somebody else. He's trying to get something to you. Amen. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Yeah, now, good. how you doing? Doing, great. doing all right? Yeah, great. Okay. Third part of the lesson. Third, third part of the test. The number one roadblock to being a good receiver is pride. Third question. Are you a proud person? Do you struggle with pride? I'm talking about in receiving. Are you a proud person? Pride manifests itself in different ways. I'm gonna give you four ways. I want you to, I wanna talk about false humility. Pride manifests itself. I, I, you know, I've been pastoring a long, I pastor a long time. And I see people all the time, they struggle so. Even people who are givers, they just struggle so with receiving. And they think it's humility, but it's false humility. All right. I want us to look at a text in John chapter 13, verses 6 through 8 in the Passion Translation the Passion Translation, Jesus lays aside his garment, puts a towel on his lap, he kneels down and began to wash the disciples' feet. Now watch when he came to Peter. In verse 6, but when Jesus got to Simon Peter, he object, objected and said, I can't let you wash my dirty feet. You are my Lord. Jesus is doing something. All right. And Peter is debating. But there are many Christians like that. Subconscious, like that. God, you can't bless me. You can't do that. Every time God speaks to somebody to bless you and you turn it down, right. you've done what Peter did. Just talking about you being a good receiver. Now watch this. Jesus replied, you don't understand yet the meaning of what I'm doing, but soon it would be clear to you. Peter looked at Jesus and said, you will never wash my feet, never. Okay, question, question, question. Is that humility? Or is that pride? Watch this. It looks like humility. 
And pride is very subtle. You know, I struggle, I struggle with pride uh, in the ministry, especially early in my ministry, the board of directors, because I never set my salary. The board of directors set my salary, and they wanted to give me a raise. I said, no, no, no. <laughs> and then I go to God praying. I'm praying for God to bless me. And he's moved on the hearts of someone to bless me, and I'm turning it down. And if you'd ask me, I'm being a humble. But really, it was false humility. Just want you to evaluate yourself. Because you are a great giving church. You, 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 you deserve to receive. But many of you don't. You don't. You, you're not receiving on the level that God wants you to receive. You're really not. And you give a, your, your giving is amazing. We're not talking about giving. We're talking about receiving. We're talking about being a good receiver. Let's look at false humility. Humility, pride, and false humility. Let's look at all three of those. Pride, humility is aligning my thoughts and my words with God's word. That's humility. Humility is when I align my thoughts and I align my words with what God says. That's true humility. That's why Jesus said over in Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, he said, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek, watch this, and lowly in heart. He said, I'm lowly. In other words, he said, I'm humble. How do we know he was humble over in John 12, 29 through 30? Jesus says, I only say what I hear my father say. So if my father says spit on the ground, make clay out of spittle, it doesn't make sense to me, but I'm just going to do what my father say. Bam. If my father says just speak the word, I just speak the word. I don't even have a mind about it. I just do what my father say. That's humility. I'm going so well with it. Just want to examine yourself because a lot of times what we think is, is humility is false humility. Now pride is thinking and speaking differently than God. Here Jesus went right to wash your feet. You'll never wash my feet because you're the Lord. False humility, let's look at it, is speaking and thinking something different than Luke 6.38. Luke 6.38 says, give and it shall be good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall give to you. Got it? So more, more often than not, God is going to use people to bless. But if you shut it down, you can't go back to God for something and God already spoke to somebody. Okay. Okay, we're not talking about giving today. We're talking about receiving. Now listen at this. L listen at false humility. I give, but I don't expect to receive. You ever heard anybody say that? How, how, have you ever said, I give, but I don't expect to receive? Doesn't that sound like humility? I give, but I don't expect to receive. No, that's, that's false humility. Listen at this. It doesn't matter to me if I get something back or not. doesn't matter to me. I'm, I'm just blessing people. It doesn't matter to me whether I get anything back or not. That sounds like humility, but it's false humility. I don't give to get. 
Now, it is true that our motives should be right. The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave. His motive was love. But listen to that. I don't give to get. That's like a farmer walking out and planting seed and say, I don't give to this saw to get anything. Uh. I'm going to ask you a question. You ever heard anybody say, I don't give to get? Let me see if you ever heard that. Any of y'all ever said that? John 3, 16, you know it, God so loved and gave the word. Let me ask you a question. Ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Did God give to get? You don't know how to answer that, right? <laughs> See, you don't know how to answer that. You don't know how to answer that because you've been saying, I don't give to get. I'm just asking you a question. Did God give Jesus to get? So let's, let's run these statements by God. Let's run them back by God. Can you imagine in the light of John 3, 16, God says, I give, but I don't expect to receive. Can you imagine God saying this? It doesn't matter to me whether I receive anything or not. What if God said, I don't give to get? That's false humility. Come on, precious people. All God is trying to do is get your head on the right place. It's got to be in the right place because the Spirit of God is going to be moving on the hearts of people. He'll alert to you when there's a need for a safeguard. You, you got the Spirit of God on the inside of you. Now it's time to open your hand. You see, a lot of people don't understand that God will operate at the level of your expectation. So if God is going to operate at the level of my expectation, if I expect nothing, Mama. then I can't give anything. Come on, precious people. You didn't put the promise in the Bible. Come on, you didn't put it in the Bible. Now listen carefully. Listen carefully. Because you're going to have resources come in all directions. Oh, oh, listen. You, you, see, because he's already been sending it. But your eyes are going to be open now. And you're going to see all the multiplicity of ways that God can bless you. You're going, you, uh, you, just, you, just, you just set up to receive an overflow right now. You're going to get an overflow. I speak that over you in the name of Jesus. I say you, you got an overflow coming to you. You hear, you hear me? You hear me? Now listen at this. Pride manifests itself in four basic ways. It, it manifests itself in false humility. We talked about that. It manifests itself in an independent mindset. Independent. Romans 14, 7 says, No man lives to himself and no man dies to himself. So an independent mindset says, I can do it myself. And see, I was, taught, I was taught to work, I was taught to stand, I wasn't taught to, be, I wasn't taught to be a beggar like many of you. You were taught to work. And so what happens now, once you come in the kingdom, you think you have to get it. That's how you're operating. And you're working 24-7 to get it, to make it happen. And it's, it's a pride mindset that I've got to make it happen because that's what the world told us, make it happen. Yeah. So God can't bless you because you're on your throne. Uh -huh. And see, while you're on the throne, God want to really bless you, but you're on the throne. You got to get off the throne. See that independent mindset? That, that your parents put that in you and the world put that in you. See, the Bible said we don't live to ourselves. We don't die to ourselves. We need others to help. Anybody that enjoy any kind of success has had somebody to give them some, sow them some, give them, show them some, do something for them. But if you got an independent mind, I, I'm going I'm to do it. 
myself. I can handle it. A lot of you need counsel. You need to talk to somebody. I can handle it. Champ, you're not handling it. I'm serious. It's messed up. You're not handling it. That independent thing, see, you, you're independent. You need, to, you need to go to somebody and talk to somebody because you're not doing a good job of handling it. Now, you know I'm not talking to everybody, but I am talking to you. Independent, that's, that's, that's a pride. Uh, I, don't, I don't need any help. You go get the counseling. I don't need any help. And, and think about it, you're in a marriage. You're in a marriage. Marriage is a team sport. I don't need any help. You go get some. <laughs> it manifests it secondly in a know-it-all attitude. That's what happened to Naaman. Second Kings 5, Naaman was a proud man. He was a general. He was a leader. He had a great reputation, but he had some problems. He was a leper, he was proud, and he was an idolater. And he couldn't heal himself. Little slave girl said, if you go down to Samaria, there's a prophet down there, he'll heal you. And he went down to Samaria, Standing at the door, he brought all his money. See, he thought it was a transaction. I give you some money, you give me some healing, see? He thought it was a transaction. So he's a big man in his hometown, so he went to the prophet's house. Prophet didn't even come out and speak to him. <laughs> prophet sent a message out there, said, go in there and watch, dip seven times in the joy. He thought like, who do he think I am? He don't know who I am. He walked off. Because he had pride. He knew it all. He, he said, I thought he was going to come out here. See, he already made up his mind how God was going to bless him. Some of you already made up your mind how God going to bless you. So he said, now, I thought he was going to come out here and call on his God and wave his hand and say, hocus pocus. And he told me to go and, and dip in that dirty Jordan River. The Jordan's still dirty. <laughs> we went to Israel and your pastor <laughs> wanted to get baptized in the Jordan. <laughs> they singing song, and he gonna get baptized in the Jordan. Pete and I looking back like, we ain't getting in that dirty water. Ain't no <laughs> I got mine, I got mine, that's good. He went down, they went down there singing, they singing songs and stuff like that. I'm not getting in that dirty water. No, no, oh, I'm not getting in that dirty water. And that's the way it looked in Naaman's day. He said, I could have stayed at home. There's beautiful waters in the area I lived in. He's telling me, and then the servant said, now, come on, come on now, listen. If he had told you to do something hard, you would have did it. He just told you to go down there and dip, and you did it. Come on, man. I said, dude, he went down there and dipped and clean. He had to release his pride because some people want to tell God how to bless them. I know I'm just talking to a few of y'all. I, I, I can look at the expressions on y'all's face and tell y'all really doing really good on this test. The final manifestation, pride manifests itself in false humility, independent mindset, a know-it-all attitude, and a controlling spirit. A controlling spirit is really consistent with this old, this independent mindset. Luke 6, 38 again says, Give it and shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, run over, shall men give it to your bosom. Let me, ask you a, let me ask you a question. It says that men will give back. Come on now. Which men? Come on, talk to me. Which men? You know? You know? He said, man, there's almost seven to eight billion people on the planet. God got seven or eight billion ways to bless you. He can use anybody he wants. And he doesn't like it when you decide who he's going to use. He can use family, and many times he'll use your family because your family heart is already bent towards you. He'll use friends, why? Because your friends' hearts are already bent toward you. But he'll also use enemies. He, he uses your enemies to prove to you 
that your enemies don't have dominion over you. And then God will use strangers, people that don't know you, to prove to you that he's a limitless God. But he doesn't want you to decide who's going to bless you. Y'all doing all right? Okay, I'm going to let you go back to your list. God is too big for you to put him in his box. You're going to see stuff coming all kinds of ways. I'm serious. You're going to see God. He's going to be blessing you all kinds of ways. Why? Because your heart is going to be open. In fact, I break that spirit of pride over you now in the name of Jesus. I break that over you in the name of Jesus. Come on, say, bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Any way you want to do it. <laughs> this is so funny. I came to give y'all a test. <laughs> Why he sent me to get a test? Why he didn't give y'all the test? The process, listen carefully, I'm about to close. I'm, I'm, I'm about to close. The process, listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. The process and the plan of God is giving and receiving. Got it? It's what? Giving and receiving. Come on. Giving and receiving. Now, is that in the Bible? Yes. Philippians chapter 4. Uh, 4 verse 15, Paul says, when I left Macedonia, he's speaking to the Philippians, he said, when I left Macedonia, no church communicated or shared or partnered with me except you Philippians in giving and what? In and receiving. There's no principle of giving in the Bible. It's like a coin. If I hand you a coin, there's a head, side, and a tail. I can't give you the heads without giving you the tail. It's giving and receiving. It's what? Giving and receiving. It's what? Giving and receiving. Now, some of you are committing financial abortions. I said some of you are committing what kind of abortions? Now, we understand an abortion in terms of pregnancy. I'm not talking about that. The word abort, abort, the word abort means to cause to fail or stop before completion. That's what abort means, like abort the mission, okay? It causes it to fail or stop before its completion. The principle is giving and receiving. And some of you are, you are committing financial abortion. You're giving, and that's wonderful, but you're stopping the completion of the plan. The plan is giving and receiving. Okay. Got a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes. And I want to give you four, three statements, and then I want you to go back to your list and see do you need to up it or downgrade it. Okay. Here's the first statement in my closing. The strength of any relationship is mutual benefit. The strength of what? Any is what? My wife and I have been married for 45 years. We've got a strong relationship. We really do. We've got a very strong relationship. But the strength of it is mutual benefit. A relationship that does not have mutual benefit is not a strong relationship. 
if one person is giving and giving and giving and the other person is just receiving and receiving and receiving and the other person, soon or later the person becomes disillusioned and I don't want to give to somebody who's just receiving, receiving. No, the strength of any relationship is mutual benefit. Does that make sense? Okay, now listen carefully. That's true of God. See, that's true of God. God is not going to let you just give and give and give and give and give and give and he just receive and receive. No, no, no. He understands that the strength of any relationship is mutual benefit. That's why every place where the Bible instructs believers to give, there's always a promise connected to it. To the tither, he said, I open the windows of heaven. To give it, those who give to the needy, he said, I'll pay you back and you'll not have lack. Those who forsake all for the kingdom, he says, you'll receive a hundredfold return. Those who give under the direction of the Holy Spirit, he said, men will give back to you. Every place where God instructs you to give, there's always a promise for you to receive because the strength of any relationship is mutual benefit. No, you're not, you're, no, you're not giving me a little patty cake now. Right? <laughs> One last statement, and then I want you to go back to your list. Okay, remember your scale, 1 to 10? And remember your, what you put on there? Mm -hmm. I want you to go back to your list, but I want you to listen to this. You have to become a good receiver, precious people, because you don't know what God's intent is. You can say, I don't need it, but you don't know what's God's intent. You may not need it, what somebody's trying to give you, but what if God has a given assignment for you and he want you to give that to somebody else when you shut it down God can fulfill his plan does that make sense now watch this watch this I'm coming right back at you you don't always know what God intent is there are times precious people how many God believe God is the father a real daddy. Okay. There are times when a good parent just wants to bless his or her child because of their obedience. What if it's not about anybody else? What if it, you don't need it, but what if God just want to show you how much he loves you? Well, just what is that? You know, when I was a little kid, my parents believed in rewarding. So I clean up the house, you know what I mean? I iron mama's clothes and stuff like that. And, and you know, I mop the floor, that mop and glow, you know, the linoleum rug. She come, come to the house, she's like, look at what my baby. I knew it was McDonald's time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I knew, I knew it. it's McDonald's time. Okay, oh, watch this. What if God just loves you? And what if he just want to do something nice for you? What, what, what if he, he wants to bless you? Oh, please listen. It doesn't always have to be something you need. I don't need that. We got to break that need mentality. God is so far past your needs. What if God just want to give you something you like? Maybe it doesn't have to do with me. Maybe God just said, listen, I love you, baby. You've been good. You've done a great job. I've been watching you. You have a heart just like mine. And I just want to do something real nice for you. And you're like, nah, I can't, I can't take that because I don't need that. Okay, that's a poverty mindset. Okay? Okay, go back to your list. 
and I'll be through. You see what you put down there? Remember on a scale of one to 10, you wrote down your, your thing, okay. Would it embarrass you if I asked you a question? If it's embarrassing, don't respond. How many of you look back at your list and you needed to make an adjustment? So how many of you, I mean, you had a five, but now you just an eight. You just got it kicking. How many had to adjust your list down? See? See? You can't live a no-lack life if you're not a good receiver. And if you don't get anything else out of this lesson, if you get this, it's just as wrong. In fact, it's insulting mm. to a God who wants to give you some, and you say, I don't want it. That's just flat out insulting. It's just flat out is insulting to Almighty God, like it would be to me. I got something, I want to share it with you, and you turn me down. That's not just wrong, it's insulting. One talking to everybody, just talking to you. I didn't come to talk to everybody, I just came to talk to you. Let's meditate. Am I a good receiver?